Hello, my name is Satyaish Chakravarti and I'm recording this video for Pluralsight. In this video, you'll learn about delegates in the .NET framework. Specifically, you'll learn what a delegate is, when and why would you use a delegate, the basic syntax for creating and using delegates, how the syntax has changed across the various versions of C-Sharp and the .NET framework. And finally, I'll introduce you to a few delegate types that are built into the .NET framework. Let's get started. A delegate is an object that represents a pointer to a function. Traditionally, to call a function you need a caller and the function to be called. However, when using delegates, the caller invokes the delegate which in turn calls the function it points to. Therefore, a delegate provides a proxy, a level of indirection, if you may, between the caller and its method. However, a delegate is not a raw function pointer. It is encapsulated within an object of a special class named delegate, which you will find in the system namespace. Also, unlike a raw function pointer, a delegate is type safe in that it cannot point to an invalid memory address and it can only point to a method. It does not expose the raw memory address it is pointing to and you cannot have it point to anything except a method. All delegates are strongly typed. This means that a delegate can only point to methods whose signatures match its own. The .NET framework declares two delegate related classes both of which are declared in the system namespace. The delegate class, which represents a single delegate, and the multicast delegate class, which derives from the delegate class and adds to it the ability to point to more than one function at the same time. All delegates we create automatically and implicitly inherit from the multicast delegate class. This means that a delegate can point to more than one function. All the functions that a delegate points to are collectively known as the delegate's invocation list. A delegate executes all the methods in its invocation list serially, that is, in the order in which they were added to it. If the methods in the invocation list of a delegate return a value, then by invoking the delegate the caller sees the return value of only the last method in the invocation list of the delegate. All the other previous values are lost. There are five steps to creating and using a delegate in .NET. They are Write the method that the delegate will point to. Step 2. Define the delegate type. Step 3. Create a delegate instance of the delegate type. Step 4. Wire up the delegate instance with the method created in Step 1. And Step 5. Finally, invoke the method using the delegate. At this point, I'm going to jump right into Visual Studio and write some code to create a delegate and call a method using the delegate. In this example, I'm going to have a method named printString that takes a string and prints it to the console and also returns the number of characters in the string. Now, just as an aside, from a clean and pure object-oriented design perspective, a method like this print string method of ours should not be written. This is bad design. A method should do one and only one thing, and it must be named appropriately. However, this method of ours, print string, does two things. It prints the string, and second, it returns a number of characters in the string. These are two different things. You will see old-style C language methods that follow this paradigm. However, good object-oriented design principles postulate that we overload each component, whatever the component be, whether it be a class or a method, with only a single responsibility. This design principle is known as the single responsibility principle. However, for this demonstration, we'll ignore the principle just so that we may focus on the topic at hand. Here's the body of the print string method. Now, instead of calling the print string method directly, I'm going to create a delegate and use that delegate to call the method. So, I'll follow the five steps we outlined in the slide. 
Step 1. Write a method that the delegate will point to. This is our print string method. Step 2. I create the delegate type. When we create a new delegate, we first create a new type, that is, a new class. This class automatically derives from the multicast delegate class mentioned in this video earlier. To create the delegate class or delegate type, we type the following syntax, the one you see right now in step 2. Now even though the syntax looks like we're declaring a method, it really is creating a class named string action which implicitly derives from the built-in class multicast delegate. Notice that the delegate defined above can only point to the methods that declare a single string parameter in their definitions and return an integer value. You may prefix access specifiers to delegates and any access specifiers that are valid for any programming constructs that are declared in the namespace level such as classes or interfaces or enums or structs will also apply to delegates but I'm skipping the access specifiers for now. Also observe that I named the delegate with a noun. Now that is a convention you should follow as well. Methods need to be named as verbs. Delegates, which are really objects of a special type, are to be named as nouns. However, under certain circumstances, we can break this rule and we'll meet with one such circumstance in this video itself. Now, step 3 and 4 go together. So when you create a new delegate type, your class automatically gets a parameterized constructor which takes just a single parameter, which is the name of the method that you wish to associate with the delegate. And finally, in step 5, I'll call the print string method via our delegate by invoking the delegate instance and supplying to it the required string parameter. Notice how when I type a single opening parenthesis after the delegate instance's name, Visual Studio's IntelliSense prompts me to supply a string argument. In this case, I'll pass the string hello world. If I care about the return value, I can print it to the console, but I, for now, I do not care about the return value, so I'll just let it be. And I'll type in a console.read key just so the console window stays. And if I run this program, we see our output, hello world. At this point, you might be wondering if all this code is worth it. Why not simply call the print string method directly instead of using a delegate? And that's exactly what I want to talk about next. You'll want to use delegates in at least two situations. First, if you're building a program where one or more components want to perform an action when another component undergoes a change in its state. For example, you want one or more mobile subscribers to receive weather updates when the temperature in their city changes. In this case, people who want to receive updates are called subscribers, and the mobile company that pushes or publishes updates is called the publisher. The change in temperature is called the event. The second reason you'd want to use a delegate is when you want to decouple a component that provides a service from the algorithm it uses to provide the service. For example, an organization class might expose a method named calculate employee bonus, and in doing so it might need to know the criteria to be used to calculate the bonus which is the algorithm. The algorithm may be decoupled from the calculate employee bonus method if the method receives the code or the algorithm as a function passed to it as an argument inside a delegate. The advantage of doing this is that algorithms can now be changed dynamically at runtime without requiring a recompilation of the organization class. During the first release of C-Sharp, Microsoft understood that delegates were going to be the foundation of many of the advanced features of the future versions of C-Sharp and the .NET framework. As a result, with every subsequent version of the language and the framework, the syntax for creating and using delegates was made simpler. The three basic simplifications made to the syntax were method group conversion syntax, anonymous methods, and lambda expressions. In the previous code example, that covered the basic syntax, we saw that to associate a method with a delegate instance, we pass the method name to the parameterized constructor of the delegate class you created. With c 2.0, the new syntax known as the method group conversion syntax eliminates the need to call the parameterized constructor of the delegate class, and instead, you simply assign the name of the method to the delegate instance. Just the name of the method 
without its signatures is called a method group. And since the right-hand expression in this assignment statement is a method group, hence the name method group conversion. I want to close this segment with some code to demonstrate the use of delegates in event notification. In this example, I'll use the method group conversion syntax. I have a stock ticker class that has a symbol, a name and a price and I'll make the stock ticker publish updates about changes to its price. And the client code in program.cs creates an object, the Microsoft stock object, and initializes it. And then there are two price changes. But currently there is no notification published and there are no subscribers interested in knowing about price changes. Let's change that. When the price of a stock changes, I want to pass this bunch of data from the stock ticker to subscribers. I'll call this class price changed event args. As you can see, it makes sense to pass a reference to the ticker itself whose price has changed and the old and the new price. Next, I'll declare a delegate type and call it price changed. This is the case where we make a departure from the convention of naming delegate types and instances as nouns. When we build observable objects that publish notifications to interested clients, we name our delegates and their instances with past tense names as though they were telling us that something has happened. So an appropriate name for a delegate type under this circumstance would follow the pattern Oh, oh, look, something happened! Or, hey, look, what just happened! Right now, any code can set the properties of the price changed event args class and we don't want that. So I'll make the setters private and include a parameterized constructor so that only the class that creates an object of this class is able to initialize it. The handlers or those methods that subscribe to delegates should be named under the paradigm it's alright I'll handle it or whatever happened handler or in this case price changed event handler. Now since the stock ticker needs to publish updates to its price I'll need to create a public delegate instance of type price changed within the stock ticker class. And in the setter of the price property, I'll invoke this delegate instance if there are subscribers associated with it. As a final step, I'll go to the client code in program.cs and wire up the delegate instance on the Microsoft stock ticker to our handler. Here is where I use the method group conversion syntax. And now, if we run this program, we receive an update for all price changes since the handler was attached to the delegate instance. To further simplify delegate creation, c 2.0 also introduced anonymous methods. An anonymous method is just the body of a function without a name. Anonymous methods allow us to quickly assign a block of code to a delegate instance without giving the block of code a name. We may pass an anonymous block of code, that is, an anonymous method, wherever a delegate instance is required to be passed. For example, in a simple assignment expression to a delegate instance, or as a return value of a function, or as an argument to a function. To assign an anonymous method to a delegate instance, simply replace the name of the method with the entire body of the method preceded by the keyword delegate. Anonymous methods enable you to omit the parameter list. This means that if the method body does not use the arguments, the anonymous method may not define them as parameters even though the callers may pass the arguments at runtime. c 3.0 further simplified the use of delegates by introducing lambda expressions. A lambda expression is an anonymous method that has two parts. The left hand side of the expression defines the parameters of the method and the right hand side defines the body which may be an expression or a statement. In the middle is an equals greater than sign which is read as goes to. 
To assign a lambda expression to a delegate instance, simply remove even the delegate keyword from the anonymous method syntax and between the parameter declaration and the method body, insert the goes to lambda operator. There are a few observations you need to note about lambda expressions. Unlike anonymous methods, lambdas do require that we declare parameters. However, the declaration may omit the data types of the parameters as the compiler is smart enough to infer them from the receiving delegate instance. When a lambda expression has only a single expression in its body, it is known as an expression lambda. Conversely, when the lambda has one or more statements in its body, it is known as a statement lambda. Statement lambdas must have curly braces, whereas expression lambdas do not need them. Finally, when declaring lambda parameters, parentheses are optional if the lambda has only one input parameter. Otherwise, they are required. As the final segment of this video, I introduce you to two built-in delegate types in the .NET framework. They are action of T, which can point to methods that accept arguments but do not return values. There are multiple overloads for the number of arguments that the method takes. And func of T, which points to methods that return values. Once again, there are many overloads based on the number of arguments that the method takes. With these delegate types in place, the steps to create and use delegates are even further simplified, as now there is no need even to create a new delegate type. You could simply use one of these two built-in types, as these examples show you. In this segment, we learned what a delegate is, why we use delegates, how to use a delegate, and the simplification of the syntax of delegates over time. Delegates are an important feature of the .NET framework. They allow for event subscription, separation of concerns, and provide a clean abstraction between subscribers and publishers. Delegates also help us decouple a component that provides a service from the algorithm it uses to provide the service. I hope this video has inspired you to check out more about delegates on your own. You could read up on link expressions, closures, and variants in C-sharp. Pluralsight is a subscription-based online learning service for professional software developers. Please visit Pluralsight for more videos that provide in-depth coverage on a wide range of technical topics.